Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.12 where I bring you another one of my crazy ideas. Recently SpaceX revealed plans for potentially a 70 meter starship with an 80 meter super heavy uh, combined that would be about 150 meters in length. This extra stretched starship super heavy uh, got somewhat derisive comments at least from Twitter uh, but as it turned out I already had an idea for a stretch starship, uh, but it's very different from what they are thinking of uh, in terms of what SpaceX has planned. There's a good reason for a stretch starship, and so let me explain. I have uh, made it. Uh, this is my advanced starship. It is, in fact, 70 meters long in this case, but that's mainly because I was uh, matching their idea, uh, but it could be longer. And the reason that I wanted a long starship is because I want a starship that can rotate to generate artificial gravity. And we also want a lot of mass in the tail for that because it has to counterbalance the mass in front. But basically this is a ship-ship starship. It is not meant to go into atmospheres and land. It's not a lander. Uh, and you're going like, well, then, you know, it should be a lander. Uh, if, you know, starships are meant to land on Mars and everything. But they're also meant to go to other places, right? I mean, they could be going to Phobos or Deimos. You don't really need to land on Phobos or Deimos. You don't need the fins or anything of that business, heat shielding. Nobody cares. Uh, you, you, you can just have a ship like this and then pop out and then walk onto the <laughs> surface of Phobos or Deimos like you'd have a boarding ramp or something. Uh, or you could be traveling to an anneal cylinder, right? I mean, there could be a space station, a huge space habitat uh, that, like people have dreamt up. Or you might be going to an asteroid, uh, like one of the asteroids in the asteroid belt or Ceres or, you know, one of the dwarf planets. Plenty of locations where there's no atmosphere to capture around, so there's no heat, but you're going to have to have extra delta V. Uh, because you can't just land with uh, whatever's remaining in your header tanks or anything like that. So, we need a proper ship, ship version of Starship. And so that's what this is. You might have already guessed some of the features because I've got my s typical solar panel texture here. Uh, but the, the whole thing is very different. First of all, we've got RS-25s in the back. Uh, these are the ones with uh, three ignitions and a vacuum optimized nozzle and so we're using hydrogen and oxygen instead of methane and oxygen and that's so that we can also have an NTR here and we've just got one of these tiny little NTRs and right now it's not reading any uh, delta V because uh, the RS-25s are going to be using all the hydrolocks and they're going to be doing that to get to orbit they'll have 5,800 meters per second like this and then the hydrogen gets refueled, but not the oxygen. So in that case, no, no oxygen, but the hydrogen tanks get refueled. And now our little NTR engine has one hour and 39 minutes of propellant, uh, delivering 2,774 meters per second. Now, for some reason, this advanced starship has not included the other propellant that's supposed to be on board. And so we can't really demonstrate that properly. I'm going to have to fix the configuration, but here's how the panels go. And so it's sort of like one of those dinosaurs with the flappy things that come out. I don't know. I mean, so it's not a wrap. What, what are those called? You guys are going to have to tell me. The one, you know, in Jurassic Park, the little ones that have like the flared uh, thing around their neck. Whatever those are, that's what this is like. We can just call it that. Uh, back here we have radiators, but mainly this is to help also shield from the radiation with this NTP core. I thought about making these solar panels as well, uh, but we don't really need that much solar panelry. But they are staggered uh, from these, so the gaps in these are sort of covered by those. And maybe that's good for the radiation, I don't know. I don't think there's going to be a huge amount of radiation. There's like the smallest NTR engine. There's about 111 kilonewtons that we're talking about here. Still, NTRs have big reactors compared to, like, the ion engines, which is what this is supposed to have. Uh, so the propellant that is not showing up here that I'm going to need fixed is the propellant in the xenon tanks, which are right in the center here. These are xenon tanks, these uh, metallic ones. And so those are for these ion units. Uh, like that, except flipped around. And in fact, these are meant to go precisely right here just like that made a nice little slot for them 
Okay, so now the balance of this is going to uh, wiggle around, so we really want en uh, ion engines that are going to be able to gimbal, uh, not just solid blocks like this. But once the xenon tanks are filled and we have the xenon in here, I wonder... We don't have the extra volume, so... Uh, anyway, uh, we should get about 6,000 meters per second with the ion engines. And we would have two on one side and two on the other side because what this has got to be doing is rotating, right? And so we want to make sure that they... I mean, it's a little bit... Uh, it's going to be flipping around like this. How are the solar panels going to work? These are things that maybe I should have thought a little bit better on. Uh, we, we'll see about that. But <laughs> uh, the artificial gravity plus the solar panels might be a bit of a problem. Maybe I should make these solar panels in the back. Uh, but anyway, uh, the idea is that it's going to be flipping around, not like that, not like that, like this, to generate the artificial gravity. The highest gravity will be down there. The floor will actually be on this side, on the nose side, not not the way you think. So that's a bit of a problem too if we when we fire the nuclear engines so we shouldn't do that until everybody's strapped down and uh, we've reversed everything or whatever. Uh, the ion engines at the center are what's going to provide the thrust for most of the journey and again since the center mass might move around a bit we will probably want uh, to fix that. Right now it's all the way up there which is not great. These habitat portions are properly sized and massed and everything, so they're a little bit heavy. And we have all the resources up here. Well, not all the resources. Actually, I might have to look at that. So, uh, I have a few things to fix here, but uh, with this habitat space, that bit. <laughs> uh, that habitat was made previously, and it's not going back on to... Okay, well, we gotta leave that be. Anyway, this is an idea. This is an idea for a ship version of Starship, a spaceship that stays in space, does not land, it has a habitat, it has passengers, it's gotta refill its hydrogen tank in space around Earth and then sort of boost up, maybe refill its hydrogen tanks again. The benefit of this over the methane and oxygen version is that um, you're not going to have to refuel it with as much mass. Basically, 80 tons will do. Actually, that's about 77 tons. <clears throat> so, um, with the modules in, 77 tons of fuel gets you 2,700 meters per second or so from the nuclear engine. And then you can get, even with the hydrogen in, get about 6,000 meters per second from the ion engine. Uh, with the xenon tanks, and the xenon might be 30 tons uh, uh, along around that range, and so with with another starship, you should be able to refuel this completely. So at least around low Earth orbit. So the hydrogen and the xenon combined is just one refueling from another starship. So that is pretty good, considering the delta V you get out of it, and still having the habitat stuff in the front. And the solar panels are definitely large enough to supply our ion engines. Uh, combined, their area is 600 meters squared. And they're tilted, though, so they're not going to get optimal, but we should be able to get 400 meters, uh, sorry, 400 kilowatts out of them or something like that. And um, even more if we tried to do something with these, so probably, I mean, they could be blocked by those. It depends on how it's all rotating. So, that's the idea. The fancy bit here was uh, having the solar panels deploy like this, but my, it, as with every animation I ever do, I guess, um, it's probably a bad idea the way they're being done here, and maybe they should be done a completely different way. Still, this is nice and fancy, and it's not like any other ship that you would have seen. Hopefully, I mean, not like many other ships. You, I can't think of one. So, it has that going for it. So, that is the introduction to this advanced starship. 70 meters of starship goodness, uh, which might actually have a reason to be 70 meters. So, with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.